number seven. Um, today I have an apology to make. I was going to wear an embroidered shirt today but as I was in the shower thinking about which one I thought I need an iron. This is going to sound like such a sob story but yesterday uh, the iron fell off the ironing board and broke. So we don't currently have a working iron. Um, I'm sitting here at home, my daughter's still in bed and my husband's gone to the shop to buy the new iron that we chose last night online. So sorry I am unembroidery adorned today but that will not happen next time. I'm sorry. Today I'm going to talk to you about Portuguese white work um, which is bullion embroidery that comes from the town of Guimarães in the north of Portugal. Uh, if you know where Porto is on the coast, if you head inland from there, that's where Guimarães is. When we went to Portugal, we just spent some time in Paris where we'd been queuing for everything, as you do in Paris, though you don't at the moment, hopefully. Um, and there were just no queues and we thought, oh, this is a very quiet little place and it is a lovely, quiet little place. So in the town of Guimarães, there is an old town and it's beautiful. Um, Guimarães used to be the seat of the, I think, royalty in um, in Portugal. Uh, so it's very, it's got some beautiful historical old buildings. Um, it's a lovely place to visit. The people are beautiful, as in attractive looking but also very lovely people. Um, I spent time there, I went to the museum in Guimarães and uh, spent some time with curators there and they showed me some really lovely old pieces of embroidery and I also spent time in a workshop where they still make the embroidery for sale and um, they demonstrated to me the making of it and they also had a lovely display for me to look at and to study and yeah it was just a lovely time that we had there. So um, from my trip there that's where I came up with this book Portuguese White Work Bullion Embroidery from Guimarães. Um, the style of the embroidery is that it's um, often got these drawn thread work bits which you work first and then in the spaces between them you work the bullion embroidery predominantly with some eyelets as well. I first came across this embroidery uh, when I was at the New South Wales Embroiderers Guild Library, uh, which is my guild, and I was looking through books that day, looking for ideas of what I could write on another book, and I picked up this book on Portuguese embroidery and on one of the pages there there was a shirt with embroidery down the front and I looked at that and I said I have to know more about that embroidery. It was just exquisite so I went home and said to my husband, how do you feel about a trip to Portugal? And he said, hmm, as long as we can go to Paris as well, that sounds fine. Um, so in those days we used to make um, my research trips into our family holidays. Um, our girls were young enough that uh, we were able to get out and do that during school holidays. Um, it's less easy now and I often do the trips by myself. Um, but yeah, at that time we were making family holidays out of my research trips, which was a lovely thing to do. So I'm going to show you probably the piece that has been most made out of the book. And it's this Portuguese white work sampler. There are 36 different motifs. Um, and as you can see, there are lots of bullions. There are also eyelets. Um, and a lot of people are scared of bullions. And I always say, well, if you are scared of bullions, doing a project in Gimaresh embroidery is a great way to get over being scared of bullions because you'll have so much practice at doing them, you'll be fantastic at them by the time it's over. Um, in my book I explain what to some is a different way of doing bullions um, and when I teach this in my classes I'll often have people who, have said, who say to me I've never been able to do bullions successfully and by the end of the class using my method which is a little different to others they are able to go home feeling like they are on their way to mastering bullion stitch and that they will have made some successful attempts. Um, and that's always a lovely feeling when you can make um, progress on a stitch that you've been having difficulty with. So Portuguese white work is done on 38 count linen. So it's quite fine linen. Um, in Portugal they call it 20L linen. 
um, and Italy as well, they call it that too. Um, I don't know what that means. I've tried to figure it out. It doesn't seem to have any relevance to me to the thread count or anything like that. So I don't know why it's called that. Um, so it's a, quite a fine linen. Sorry, I'm trying to get this in a way that you can see it rather well. Um, and the thread that is used is a Pearl Cotton 8. Um, with it, we use a straw number no. 3 needle. Uh, and I generally use, well, I use that for the bullions, um, but I also use it for the other uh, surface embroidery as well. And I could change to a different needle for doing the eyelets and things like that, but I think, oh, well, there's no real point in changing. I can do it just as easily with the, um, the straw needle, so why not? Uh, the drawn thread work, which are made of wrapped bars, um, is you it uses a number 24 tapestry needle which might seem a little bit uh, chunky when you're working with a 38 count linen but you're not trying to match your needle to your linen you're matching your needle to your thread so you need to have a needle that's thick enough for the doubled thread because that's what it is when it goes through the eye there's a th piece of thread that comes out each side so it's doubled um, you need to have it thick, the, the shaft of the needle thick enough to make a hole that that thread can go through without abrading each time it goes through the fabric. So it might feel like it's a bit thick for the, the count of the linen, but it, that's not what you're matching it to. You're matching it to your thread. So often I have little, uh, what can we call them? disagreements with some of my students who feel that my needles are too thick um, but there is a very good reason why I choose the needles that I do and the thickness that I do for them um, and I do carefully explain why it is that I choose that um, so when people are working this embroidery you do the drawn thread work first and then you do the surface work in the, the, um, the areas that you've created with the drawn thread work. Some people ask me why don't you do the surface work first and then the drawn thread work. Well as you can see those the drawn thread work motifs sit perfectly in the centre of the um, drawn thread work areas and if you did the drawn thread work afterwards there's pretty much no chance you'd get it in the right place and so that's why we do it that way. It does feel a little bit backwards to some people. Um, I made a tablecloth in this which is in the book which I'll probably show you on another occasion and uh, I refer to it as the tablecloth that nearly killed me and the reason why is because I had to do all of the drawn thread work first and that took a long time and it looked so beautiful at the end of it that I thought do I have to do the rest of it on top but of course I did because otherwise it wouldn't have been Portuguese white work. Um, but it just took so long and it just felt like it was never, ever, ever going to end. And I said to my husband, can't I just do three sides and no one will ever see the third side in the photographs? And he said, no, you have to finish it. So I did because I knew he was right. I knew that if I didn't, it would never get finished. So, yeah, I did. I was a good girl. Um, so if you've never tried this style of embroidery before, I do encourage you to. If you're scared of bullions, it's great for getting over your, your uh, fear of them because you will have so much practice and you'll get good at them by the end of doing all of those many, many bullions. Um, so that's all I have to say today. I hope you're having a good Easter weekend if that's something that you commemorate and celebrate. We do here. Yesterday was Good Friday and it's a lovely day. We went to church online because can't, we can't meet together. Um, and yeah, it was a really nice day. Um, and so I hope you're having a good weekend. Enjoy your stitching. Bye.